Welcome to Seduce Me, The Complete Story. So, for those asking, because of how big the game is, quoted at eight hours just for the first game, we will only be doing Seduce Me 1, unless people really, really want me to do a full Let's Play of the canon route. And yes, we will be doing the canon route, as that is the one that, with all the Tomies, there's always one canon, so this one's the canon route. Um, the first game is free. Second game is, I believe, $10. The entirety of the story, including Seduce Me Atome, Seduce Me to the Demon War, and all of these is $20. On Switch, uh, on Steam, and itch.io. And it's been a while, so I think I can also announce this for you all. There are plans to make this game for consoles. There is hopefully going to be a console port. So, it's just, it's taking a long time because of how big the game is. So, I think that is you well. Why is the command not working? I'm gonna, I'm gonna yell at it. Because it should work. Oh, that's why. Because I didn't read it correctly. Lamau. Here we go. Now I read it correctly. It's correct now. Um. But yeah. There are plans to make this for consoles over time. And the music you're listening to now was actually done by a, a live orchestra. So... We did this specifically for Seduce Me, The Complete Story, um, with motif that is constant in Seduce Me. Um, but as for credits, I might as well give credits to the creative team before we start. There I am, writer and director, executive producer, Sprite, Camille, uh, Camille Rulli, background artists, special guest artists, because we had many special guest artists, um, composer, Christopher Escalante, Jonah Scott, who is also my birthday twinsy, happy birthday Jonah is helping with sound effects, and Ethan Nakashima with us in programming. The main cast, we have Bradley Gareth, Christopher Escalante, Alejandro Saab, Ethan Nakashima, Jonah Scott, me, Sheila M. Gagne, uh, well, Sheila M. Lynn, back then was Sheila M. Gagne, um, Worky D. Chocobo, James Brown Jr., uh, Pickle 3131, Samantha Chan, Zach Aguilar, Brennan Blaber, Hayden Davio Hunt, uh, who is now Hayden Saab, um, Amber Lee, Richard Barcinas, uh, Stephen Kelly, Brittany Lauda, Damon Mills, Patrick Seymour, and my sister Natasha. And we have a magnitude of supporting cast members who all are blessings to work with, and I, I absolutely love and adore each and every one of them. Um, there's just so many people to list and so many people in the name. Just, yeah. Got a lot of people on board. Yeah. So, glad we have... Uh, I actually have it unlocked yet. So I guess we'll block that lid. But, yeah. <sighs> My heart can't take this. Let's start this. Yeah. And as you can see, the achievements. I actually had to give myself a code. Um, which I may give, I may do a code giveaway. I don't know. I feel like it. Because I actually have a bunch of codes. Ah! That's the door. It's all good. It's all good. Oh, my heart. Ah. But anyways, so. Um, I have a couple of codes, Steam codes, that I might give away. Who knows? Um, I don't know. It depends on how I feel. But anyways. <sighs> this is a... Fictional interactive narrative. Any character resemblances to real life people are purely coincidental. Also, the game is made for PG-16 audiences. No, please know that sexual violent themes are explored in this game. Trigger warnings include abuse, implied rape, and suicide. You have been warned. Please enjoy. Why, hello. My, aren't you a gorgeous sight? Can I be honored enough to know your name? Hello, Christopher Escalante. <laughs> I remember when 
when this first came out, all of the Let's Play players who got to this section were like, What the hell? What the hell? They all freaked out. It was fantastic, and I loved it. Uh. What? Uh, no. I'm not me. You guys are- you boys are my children. Mika's the name. Mmm. A lovely name. For a lovely person like you. Wonderful. Eric, do your job. Very well. <clears throat> this game was produced by Seraphim Entertainment under the direction of Michaela Laws and is powered by Renpai Visual Novel Engine. We truly hope you'll enjoy this story. <sighs> I know I'll enjoy it, since you'll be in it. Eric. Fine, fine. <laughs> Farewell, my sweet. And here's the intro video. Let's go! And don't mind me as I rock out. Sob, let's go! Yeah. <laughs> ah, that brought me back. That that shot me back in time. Somewhere. Come on. Is that all you got? Wanna try me, asshole? Crap. Missed. Let's retreat for now. No kidding. Let's get out of here. That's right. You better run, you stupid punks. Stay out of our territory. <sighs> call it fate or call it coincidence. That one moment of violence started the chain of events I will never forget. This formula, created in the 70s, is one of the most important in the field of financial theory. Give me a hot second. I apologize, Miss Phillips. I apologize. Let's lower that a little bit so we can hear your lovely voice. It is used to calculate the price of European-style options and is widely used by option marketers, though there are some discrepancies that are now corrected with the modern viewpoint. Rain. It's been a long time since we've gotten rain around here. But it's April, so it's not exactly that surprising. Voice is what I know. Personally, I love the sound of it. And just like especially the 500 bits, you are way too sweet. And why is this rain sound effect not properly looping? I'm gonna have to look at that later. <sighs> the soft tapping of fingers was so soothing. Even looking at the droplets at the glass of the window was strangely calming. For this reason, I felt lucky for having a seat next to the window. I spent more time staring outside than I did paying attention in class. The lectures in class were pretty boring. Miss Phillips' voice was passionate, but I was just I just wasn't interested in what she was saying. And since it was the period right before lunch, all I could think about was doing other things. Honestly, I didn't really care much for economics. Sure, I had good grades in this class, but it was only because I read the textbook and did my assignments PM time. Great, I gotta change that. Uh I was only taking this class because it was mandatory. If it were up to me, I would have taken another course. Luckily, it was my senior year, so after this, it would mean the end of high school courses forever. Thank God for that. I didn't hate high school, it was just mundane how the days drifted on and on as if there were no end to it. The only thing I really enjoyed about going to school was meeting my friends and hanging out with them. That was kind of it. In short, I was done with high school. The start of second semester brought a note of finality to it. 
I had already applied to a few universities the semester prior, and I was expecting a reply sometime within the next few months. It seemed like the start of something. Something that would change. I stared at the faint, outlined raindrops in the distance. For now, I was stuck in this class. Miss Anderson. Miss Phillips. Miss Phillips' voice interrupted my train of thought. Just when I was thinking about class, I quickly turned my head to face the teacher. Hopefully she didn't pick me just because she noticed I was spacing out. Ye yes, ma'am? Would you care to name the equation I set up on the blackboard? Oh, I read about that in the textbook last night. It should be the Black-Scholes model formula. Very good as always, Miss Anderson. Anderson. It followed me wherever I went. Most people really didn't know me by my first name, but rather my surname. No doubt, since the surname was the trademark of the internationally famous and philanthropic Anderson Family Toys. The founder was my grandfather. Suzu, one of my best friends, turned around and proudly gave me a punch on the shoulder. Kick ass, girl. From beside me, I heard Naomi, one of my, another one of my best friends, clearing her throat in obvious disapproval of Suzu's choice of words. <clears throat> she means good job, Miss Capini. Oi! Care to tell me who the creators of this formula were? Uh, some guys named Black and Scholes? <clears throat> Fisher Black and Myron Scholes. Very good, Miss Patterson. Show off. Better study next time, Suzu. Be like us and study once in a while. My god, this is just shooting me back. Like, working with um, Pickle131 and Samantha, who's also my uh, twinsie, my birthday twinsie, they're both phenomenal, and I love them. I love them, I love them, I love them. Suzu rolled her eyes and slouched into her chair as Naomi gave her a small smirk. She always pouted when Naomi showed her up. That's the end of today's lecture. Now, let's separate into groups and work on your projects. Remember, everything is due on Monday. Go ahead now. Before I knew it, Naomi and Suzu, uh, Suzu and Naomi had scooted their chairs to align with mine, and we turned into the three musketeers. Is Alfie is still in development? It's still on a permanent hiatus. Whenever the teacher let the students decide on groups, we always grouped together in our little trio. It was sheer luck. It was a sheer stroke of luck that we all managed to be in the same class, so we had to at least take the opportunity and stick together as much as we could. Besides, we were the most comfortable around each other than any or than around any other classmate. It just made sense for us to put our heads together for any kind of project. I took out the poster we were working on and rolled it open to the three desks. We were pretty much finished with fulfilling most of the guidelines of the project, though we did still have to add a few finishing touches here and there. After working on making the poster a bit prettier, we sat back and inspected our work to see what we still had to do. Naomi, as usual, was the first to look for any issues. She lightly tapped a pencil against her chin, staring intently at the project. Alright, so let's see. We finished the budgeting section, the building leasing, and the cost for labor. What else do we need? Suzu straightened up to look at the poster and stroked her chin. After a few seconds, her face brightened as she spoke up. How about a company name? Huh? Did we really skip over that? Of course we did! You always go straight into the logical statistics and stuff that you completely skip over the fact. We need a name for our project. <sighs> at least we caught it this time. What do we name it? Hmm, not sure. What do you think? It always came down to me. Whenever there was something to be named or titled, I was the master in ending decision. Even when I didn't want to be. I like Trinity Corporations. That is way too predictable. How about the Dragon Company? What do dragons have to do with our project? What? It's a totally unpredictable name. It's hot. But our company sells bubblegum. Who said we can't produce spicy bubblegum? Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> What do you think? Yeah, what do you think? Both of them looked at me expectantly, even though I wasn't quite sure myself. I really didn't want to choose sides, but if it were up to me, I would say... Shh. Trinity Corporation sounds fine, I like that. And if I, if somehow I gain, like, if I win the lottery, guys, if I win the lottery and I ever come back to this, one, we're getting a male option for an MC, and also a non-binary option for the MC. Um, but... Three, I'll also add, like, if there's choices like this where you can name shit, giving the option to let the player actually name. 
something like, for example, Trinity Corporations or Dragon Company, what if you like, uh, fuck me silly, <laughs> fuck me silly bubblegum, or <laughs> something like that, like, jokes like that, where it's just like, adding on to it, it's like, well, that's, <laughs> it's just things like that. Um, but, uh, me, personally, Michaela, I'll go Dragon Company. That's the sound badass. Booyah! Dragon Company it is! Alright, now that we've decided on a name, now what? As we ended our name game, a giggle scrambled my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, um, by the way, I might talk some spoilers here and there, simply because I may not go through the whole game today. Um, and a lot of you know kind of the story, what's going on. With Lisette, I kind of wish I had more time to expand upon her a bit I more. Uh, what? <laughs> what? Oh, well, fair enough. <laughs> I kind of wish, like, um, down the line, I wish I would have expanded more about Lisette's, um about her like integral part of the story because um, she is a very important start point um, from when Diana comes around. Um, and so it makes sense if you know something later on in the story. If you actually follow through with a thing later on in the story, it makes more sense as to why something happens. Um, but I didn't really get to explore it. So Lisette's just kind of there being like, oh, human issue, <laughs> who fucking cares? Huh, who's that? Ignore it, it's just Lisette. I looked over my shoulder to see Lisette laughing with her circle of friends, mostly comprised of popular people. As a result, everyone in the school knew them. In the center of it all was Lisette White. She sat with a posture that indicated she was still working, but ready to casually chat about her day. She was an endearing balance of charismatic and awkward, which was readily apparent when she first talked to someone. It was easy to make her smile and laugh, and she was quite the comedian as well. Basically, she was perfect. Not that she was a robot or anything, but she was the student that everyone else wanted to be. Lisette was bright-eyed, easygoing, and above all, had her future laid out right in front of her. Unlike the average student, she knew that what she wanted to do after high school. As a result, she was confident and ambitious, though sometimes it could rub a lot of people the wrong way. Moreover, I had known her ever since I was young, but it ultimately resulted in a rivalry that continued today. Of course, my friends knew it was between us, and upon seeing me glance at her, they shifted their attention to her. She doesn't even look like she's working, in my opinion. She probably is, but she's too much of a stuck-up priss to allow herself to look like she's actually doing work. Is it, So, is your next game about your new dream of hair and what- No! <laughs> no, Retro! Oh, come on, Suzu. She may be a little off-putting, but she's not the giant priss that you're making her seem to be. The day she isn't a priss is the day I turn into you. What's that supposed to mean? Never mind. It's about time. Let's bail. Were, was anyone else one of those students that just waited for the fucking bell to ring so you could bolt out of class? And every time you started getting ready to pack, your teacher's like, the bell hasn't rung yet. Like, Shut the fuck up. The bell's about to ring. I want to get out of here. I had to go all the way across the goddamn school to get to my next class. And I got three minutes to fucking do it. Fuck off! I gotta use a bathroom in between! <laughs> I was one of those students. Like, ugh. Unsurprisingly, Suzu was the first out of the classroom, slinging her backpack over her shoulder with ease as she quickly strolled out the door. Her seat isn't even closest to the exit, and she always manages to be the first one out of the door. I don't think I'll ever understand that. Ah, me and you both, Naomi. Me and you both. She gave me a smile as if relieved by the fact that I felt the same way as she did. See? Why can't she just be normal like the two of us? It's Susan, Naomi. Think about it. Very true. <laughs> Man, you guys are slow. Are you coming or what? We heard you the first time. Not everyone has rocket boosters attached to their legs when the bell rings. Are you kidding me? That class was ridiculously boring. Even Miss Valedictorian here was dozing off a bit. <laughs> I do have to admit I was spacing out. And just because I answered one question doesn't mean I'm automatically the valedictorian. Okay, so it wasn't too interesting. But you should at least pay attention when Phillips is talking about the important parts. So you finally admit it. We're finally on the same wavelength. Welcome to the club, Patterson. Please, don't call me by my last name. This isn't the classroom. Never in a million years will we ever see things eye to eye. <laughs> Despite this, they both burst out in laughter. Normally, anyone who would think that two people so opposite would never associate with each other. However, even though they were so different, their friendship somehow made a lot of sense. And here's the thing. 
I've had there's let's players that called this out being like, no, they fucking are. They can't be best friends. Oh my god, it doesn't make any fucking sense. I had friends who are just like these two, who are who are literally best friends to this day. Sometimes opposites really do attract. And that actually is a thing that happens. A lot of people just don't want to believe it because they see, oh, this person is hot, this person is cold, they can never fucking mix. Like sometimes they do. Don't limit yourself to what stereotype don't just don't just sit there and think you know everything just because you watch Euphoria. <laughs> just a saying. Or shit like that. Just don't. There is balance. Maybe they were just perfect compliments, or personality just didn't dictate the possibility of their friendship. Let me repeat that again. Maybe they were just perfect compliments, or personality just didn't dictate the possibility of their friendship. After all, we three had been best friends since preschool. All right, so where are we heading to first? Cafeteria? I think we can all agree that we're really hungry, especially after hearing about our company's line of deliciously spicy bubblegum. Who would even buy that? I wonder. Me? I would pay good money to get a taste of it. <laughs> you do like spicy food after all. We entered the cafeteria, a bustling room filled with the aromas of different kinds of food. As we got in line, we ordered our meals and chatted freely. Cajun fries and the spicy chicken burger for me. That's my definition of a good meal. I'll take a tuna sandwich and some juice. You're probably going to need water or something to curb all that spicy flavor, Suzu. I can't be tamed by the likes of that. If it's spicy, then it's gotta be all or nothing. You're crazy! Hell yeah, I'm crazy. I think I'm getting a migraine. I think I'll go with just mac and cheese and a soda. I think I'm Gucci on that. That sounds good. Once we got our food, we settled down at one of the empty tables, putting our backpacks aside to finally dig into the food. Suzu leaned back in her chair, tilting it back so she could rest her feet on the table by her food. All right then, is there anything we want to talk about? <laughs> Bored already? I know, let's talk about... Say boys and I will never speak to you ever again. <coughs> Aww, why not? What's so interesting about talking about guys? It's not like any of us are gonna get boyfriends anytime soon. We don't know that! What if one of us does get a boyfriend? Like that's going to happen, Naomi. Look at us. I'm a tiny Italian. You're a ditzy blonde. And there goes the Bechdel test, exactly. Hey! No offense. And Anderson here. Well, I guess she could land a boyfriend or girlfriend if she wants. Or girlfriend? She can be a lesbian if she wants. Yeah, Naomi. She could be a lesbian if she wants. What about you, huh? You could be a lesbian if you want to. <laughs> True. That's not a hint or anything. That's okay, Suzu. I'm not sure I want a boyfriend yet. Why not? It's our senior year. Might as well get a boyfriend. Maybe she's just not interested in a relationship, Suzu. Well, it really wasn't about wanting a relationship, but more of there was no one I was interested in having a relationship with. Don't get me wrong. I'm a very open person, but there were not many interesting guys in the school. Who knows? Time will tell. Naomi looked at me, wanting to continue the conversation. However, before she could speak, the speakers in the cafe in the calf began to start up, and an announcement echoed through the cafeteria. Miss Anderson, please come to the main office immediately. Please bring your things with you. Oh my! Looks like our plans have been cut short. The men in white coats have finally come to get you. <laughs> Suzu, don't joke around. What if it's serious? Ah, fine. If something happens, just call us. Something did happen, and it was certainly no laughing matter. Cold. It was really cold. The rain became heavier that afternoon, accompanied by rolling thunder. The skies had turned dark. I couldn't see any of it under the black umbrella. I stared up at the grass beneath my feet, unable to look up at the people weeping around me. All I could see was the damp grass underneath me. Only the monotone eulogies that floated through my ears reminded me that I was at a funeral. It was only when the speeches ended that I was finally able to raise my to raise my head. A small gathering of people, mostly made of relatives that I didn't even know, were huddled around a simple, small grave. For a while, all I heard was the sound of raindrops on umbrellas. If it were not for the rain, everything would be in a heavy silence. I looked beside me where my father was standing, 
holding up a large black umbrella for our small family of three. His face was emotionless, a strange sight next to my weeping mother. I wondered what was going on through his mind. Ghost, thank you so much for the hundred bits. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> After all, etched into the smooth gray tombstone before us was his father's name. My grandfather, the one who raised me like his own daughter, had passed away that day. Slowly, people began to leave. Until it was just my father, my mother, and myself at the grave. A man dressed in a clean black suit under the uniform black umbrella of the funeral attendees walked towards us, introducing himself as Grandfather's lawyer. He pulled out a few documents from his suitcase and began to read aloud. And now, I shall read Harold Anderson's last will and testament. Only my parents and I were allowed to be present for my father's will. It was under the strict request of his lawyer, and there was a reason why. And to my dearest granddaughter, I give my estate. All the furniture and decor that resides within the house shall also be given to my granddaughter. What? I couldn't believe my ears. I had earned the family estate? At 18? That was impossible, yet it was written in my own grandfather's hand. He passed the family estate to her? Why am I not surprised? Dear. Well, did he say anything about what will become of the CEO and chairman position of the Anderson Toys Company? No. It is presumed that the vice chairman will succeed the position. <laughs> Even to the bitter end, he wouldn't give in. What a stubborn old man. Shaking his head, my father turned to face my mother with a serious expression on his face. About the estate. Should we send her there to get used to the building? It'll be a good place for her to live after high school. Are you sure we should? Why not? This would be a good experience for her. Honey, what do you think? <sighs> I really wasn't sure what to say. Why did my grandfather think that I was the appropriate heir to the, an to the mansion? Was I even ready to live on my own? Well, that seems to be it. We'll be taking our leave now. I'm sure the little heiress needs some time to adjust. David! Even though she raised her voice, my dad wordlessly began walking back to the car. Disinterested. Yeet! <laughs> Don't mind him, honey. I think that your grandfather's passing really affected him. Why don't we get back home for now? You can go on ahead to the car, Mom. I think I need some time alone with Grandpa. Oh, of course. Take all the time you need. I mean, what better way for the, for the Atome protagonist to like a bunch of dudes than to have a daddy complex? <laughs> she gave me a quick hug and hurried after my dad. I looked around the funeral grounds, which was completely empty, save for the sudden-looking grave that laid in front of me. I'm sure that if Grandpa were in charge of arranging all this, it would have been much different. It was blatantly obvious that my dad was in charge of the whole event. Who else would bury their own family the same day they pass away? Everyone knew my grandfather's love for toys. Yet, the grave was a mere stone slab on the ground, void of any warmth. My dad didn't even bother putting flowers. His disdain for my grandfather was almost pitiful. Sorry, Grandpa. I tried to force out some words, but the only thing that came out was a choke sob. You told me to stay strong. Right now, I'm the farthest from it. <laughs> Just want to go back to before. Grandpa! Oh, it's so good to see you again, sweetie. I was swept into a giant bear hug. We both laughed as he swung me around like an airplane. It was one of my favorite things about seeing my grandfather, the way he greeted me. Unlike my father, my grandfather was loving and playful, even as I grew older. Sorry that Daddy couldn't be here today. He said that he wasn't feeling too good again. It was always like that. Dad missed every visit to Grandpa's house, citing that he was busy with work or wasn't feeling well. Is that so? Well, that's okay. Daddy can come around next time. And you're here, right? Mm, yeah! So what are we doing today, Grandpa? Mommy says that there's a new dessert cafe open in town. Maybe we should go? Oh, I would love to. But I've been so busy with the company these days. We're actually working on a little something. Would you like to see? Yes! Ooh, is it a toy? It is. I was designing a new line of them. 
but I feel like something's missing. You don't think you could help me out, could you? Of course! He placed the toy in my hands with a smile, and I inspected it carefully. It was beautifully crafted, and obviously a lot of work was put into it. There was one thing, though. So, what do you think? Hmm. <laughs> I think the heart in this chest should light up when you hug it. It'll be like it's alive, and it could be like a little nightlight before you sleep. He stroked his chin, considering my input while nodding his head. After a few moments of silent deliberation, he turned to me with a chuckle. That's a great idea. I'll get to changing it right away. You're always like my little lucky charm, dear. You always know what to add to make the perfect toy. <laughs> well, I hope I could be like you one day, Grandpa. Um... It actually is in here. Like, you actually do find out in Seduce Me, Seduce Me 1 even, why the dad didn't like the grandpa, grandpa so much. You want to make toys as well? Mm-hmm. Well, making people happy is the best feeling in the world. I don't know if I want to make toys when I grow up, though. Don't worry too much about it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. That makes sense. Daddy doesn't seem to think of it the same way, though. Your father. I'm sure he just wants the best for you. I'm not so sure about that. Sweetie, look at me. He bent down to look at me eye level, with a serious look on his face. As much as your father may say something that doesn't make sense now, you must remember that he's always thinking about you. He loves you. There's no doubt about that. And you need to love him just as equally. Um, that would be Lee Turner. He's one of my older voice actors. Um, he doesn't do much voice acting, but he does audition now. But I've seen him audition. I don't hate Daddy. I really do love him. I don't know why he's like this, though. Your father and I have had some difficulties with each other in the past. But it's nothing that you should be concerned about. I had heard tidbits from this from my mother and various other people. The only people who had stayed quiet were my father and grandfather. Both of them refrained from saying a word on the subject matter. But it was clear that whatever happened set up a wall between them. It's hard, though. Trying to pretend as if nothing were wrong. However, no matter what, you have to stay strong. You're a big girl already, and, well, there'll come a day when it seems like it's you against the world. But always remember that your family and friends will be here with you. Daddy, Mommy your friends at school, me, we'll stand together to get through it. How can you be so sure of that? Because we'll be right here and here. He pointed his finger to my head first, and then pointed at my chest. So stay strong, promise? For a moment, he looked almost sad, pleading. But as quickly as it had come, the expression disappeared from his face, and he was all smiles once again. Promise. Upon hearing that, Grandpa let out a great burst of laughter and stood up. All right then, enough of that. How about I whip up some special homemade dessert? I know I can't accompany you at that new cafe, but we sure can talk and eat while I cook and do some paperwork. Hold on, I gotta wipe my glasses. My glasses are dirty. They're so dirty. Hold on. Okay, I, w I finished wiping my glasses. Nope, they're so dirty. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta wipe my glasses. What the hell? <laughs> <sighs> okay. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> Where are we? Homemade dessert! I'll race you to the kitchen! Hey, slow down there. I'm not what I used to be. <laughs> you willed me the very home I loved to see you in. Why? Why would you think I would be ready to take it? Especially after this. A surge of anger bubbled within me, but I could miss it. There was no use in getting mad, especially when the person in question was no longer there. I'm sorry. It's hard to stay calm when you've left me with so many questions, especially about what happened between you and Dad. <laughs> what am I doing? Talking to a grave. My vision blurred and I suddenly realized that I was crying. My face heated up as tears rolled down my cheeks. I'll bring you some flowers later. I. I miss you, Grandpa. I'll try my best to fulfill my promise I gave. Even if the world might be turned against me. I left the grave, wiping my tears hastily so my parents wouldn't see. 
Well, it's time to head back home. I'll cook up your favorite lasagna when we get home, okay? Thanks. However, my dad didn't speak the entire drive home. I wanted to talk to him, but after his moment at the funeral, I wasn't sure if that was a good idea. It's about time we took off those dreary black clothes. Gathering my courage, I decided then it was time to... Dad, could I ask you something? Go ahead. Why do you want me to move to, into the estate so soon? I thought I made that rather clear. The college near your grandfather's house is well known for its business program. You are planning to major in business, yes? <sighs> right after you graduate from high school, you'll just live there and can easily commute to and from school. It's a perfect fit for you. What? It's so sudden. You just decided so quickly right after the funeral. Uh, don't be so sensitive. If you're like that in the real world, you'll be crushed. I'm just saying that maybe we could talk a bit more about my future. In reply, my father rubbed his temples inside quiet. After you graduate from college, you'll work at Anderson Family Toys. I have connections since I am part of the board of directors, so you will be guaranteed a spot. That is what we talked about before, yes? But what if... Stop mumbling! What if, what if I don't want to work there? Don't be silly. It's the family company. Our company. I'm not just going to hand it over to some incompetent vice chairman. <sighs> he came closer to his face. So. Look, this is all for the best, okay? You may not know it right now, but you will appreciate it later. For some reason, when I heard him say that, something snapped. I wasn't exactly sure what it was, but it made me feel so angry. Do you even care that Grandfather passed away? Of course I do. Well, everything seems fine and dandy to you. Things couldn't be better. Excuse me? I don't like your tone, young lady. It's not like- it's like nothing ever even happened at all. Like, you just ignored the fact that he's no longer here. Do not raise your voice at me. <laughs> what did he ever do to you to deserve this? My father, his face hardened, crossed his arms and erupted in angry laughter. Ha! <laughs> you sure place him upon a pedestal, like he's some kind of venerated god or something. It makes me sick. Is that it? Are you happy seeing Grandfather dead? While everyone was grieving, were you holding yourself back from laughing in everyone's faces? Did you just feel a bit happier seeing him lie in the graveyard? A flash of rage crossed his face, and he whipped the back of his hand across my cheek. You don't know anything! Running your mouth like somehow you know everything that went on when you're just a little girl that doesn't know how to keep her mouth shut. You did not know my father. You did not know what he was capable of. Is everything all right? What happened? Nothing. I'm not hungry. I think I'll just go to my room. Honey, wait! I quickly turned and ran up the stairs to my room, slamming the door behind me. My breath came in short pants, and for a while I just leaned against the door to my bedroom, eventually sliding down to sit against it. How did things become like this? My cheeks were dry, and I tentatively stood up and looked in the mirror to see how it looked. Hopefully it doesn't close. <laughs> what am I saying? Tears formed at the corners of my eyes, but I blinked them away rapidly. I couldn't cry twice on the same day. Had to be stronger than that. What the hell? Yeah, sorry. We got another bell. At the we got the door ring again! Are you alright? Your father told me nothing happened, but you know your father. I'm fine. I just lost my appetite. The lasagna's done, though. And I don't want you skipping any meals. Are you sure? Yeah, don't worry about me, Mom. I'll come downstairs later to eat. You're not telling me the whole story. I, I just don't want to eat right now. Please, dear. Tell me what's going on. I wish you would tell me why you're being like this. <sighs> I wanted to talk. A part of me was screaming 
to tell her what Dad had done. At the same time, I knew she couldn't fix anything. Besides, I was moving out regardless. I remained silent, letting the event remain in the past. Well, I'll leave your food on the table if you want to eat it later. What's that? My sister just got me a thing. What the hell did- what? Huh? What? My sister just got me a thing. Hold on. Huh? What the fuck? Oh my fucking god! My My sister just got me Oreo cupcakes! Holy shit! Holy shit! Bro! My sister's the fucking best! My sister is the fucking best! Holy shit! Let her know I love her! She's not watching stream right now, but let me know- I, let her know that I love her! Well, they're cookies and cream cupcakes, not Oreo cupcakes. They're cookies and cream cupcakes. But, oh my god! I'm going to consume all of that tonight! Uh, yeah, me and you are consuming all of that. Let's go. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, okay. Eh? Ah, this is not sponsored. <laughs> Emotional Family Drama is sponsored by Oreo Cupcakes. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Finally, my mom left me alone. It was strange to think that she was only a few inches away from me, only separated by a single wooden door. I really didn't know what to do. I needed to do something, anything, to get my mind off of what just happened. Anything would be better than thinking any more about the pain still radiating from my cheek. I was going to move into my father's house, my grandfather's house tomorrow. I should probably pack my stuff so I would be prepared for tomorrow. Yeah, that was a good idea. I should start packing. I opened the closet, rummaging around for a while before I finally turned, found two large bags. Pulling them out onto the floor of my room, I then began to empty my drawers and cabinets so that I could bring all my things with me. I didn't have much to bring other than just clothes and some toiletries. It was kind of bizarre that I didn't have any personal belongings. It wasn't like my luggage was completely devoid of them, but I certainly didn't have many things in my room that I would miss if I suddenly left my house. I shook my head to rid myself of those thoughts. If this was going to be my new home, it would be, have to feel like it. One way or another, I was going to make it a home. Just as I was packing my things, my cell phone began ringing and vibrating in my pocket. Hello? I got a thing from Amazon. Hold on. <laughs> I keep getting stuff from like, what, what, what's going on? Oh, it's just, yeah, it's junk. I thought it was like something important. I thought it was something important. Right? It would be a gift card. Wouldn't that be nice? I slid my phone out of my pocket and answered it while setting it onto the, myself onto the bed. Who could possibly be calling? Hey, Anderson, you there? Is everything all right? We were worried about you, so we decided to call. <sighs> Hello? I'm really glad you guys called. My voice managed to come out. It was only a whisper. What happened? Are you okay? Well... I slowly began to tell them of the funeral that afternoon. The small silence followed when I was done recounting what happened. And to my relief, Naomi finally spoke up. I can't begin to imagine how you must be feeling right now. I'm so sorry. Do you want us to come over right now? Uh, no, it's okay. My dad isn't in a good mood, so... Can we just keep talking on the phone like this? Of course! We'd stay on the phone until the crack of dawn. Right, Suzu? Yeah. We're always here if you need us. After all, we wouldn't be the awesome triple threat trio without you, right? <laughs> yeah. Triple threat trio? That sounds like the name of a gang. Yeah. I mean, we're all taking on the world together. We've got to sound somewhat scary, or else no one's going to take us seriously. What's with you in naming things? You've got to step up your game, Naomi. Falling behind to the cool kids like Anderson and me. Tsk, tsk. Hey! I'm a cool kid! If anything, I'd say you have to step up your game! We chatted cheerfully about all sorts of things. 
Very soon I had forgotten about the events of the day and was engaged in a conversation about Naomi's favorite TV show, some program called Thurlock. We all agreed that the actor playing the titular character certainly had a very distinctive look about him, with that long overcoat and scarf wrapped around his neck. Huh? Thurlock. 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 We had many disagreements about who we thought was the coolest character. <laughs> yeah, he has really high cheekbones and his eyes are pretty. Though I do have to say I prefer Jotson, and as a bonus, his actor is just so sassy. I looked at the uh, clock hanging on the wall and realized how late it was. Oh, whoa, it's already 1 a.m.? Sorry for keeping you guys up so late. I, I think I'm going to hit the hay for today. See you guys at school tomorrow. The pride didn't just name it Herlock Shops. <laughs> and I get that, but I'm, I'm not the one who wrote Arsenal in the Pawn Bucks. <laughs> I should probably shower and go to bed. I can't believe I stayed up this late just to talk to my friends. But it was really nice. Well, to the bathroom I go. I took a relaxing shower. Nothing beats hot water and the feeling of being clean. <laughs> After drying myself, I promptly dressed into my pajamas and crawled into bed. <sighs> a nice shower after a long day. I'm so glad to finally be in bed. It had been a really long day. I knew I was wishing for something to change back in class, but I certainly wasn't expecting any of the things that happened today. And I have to go back to school tomorrow. Uh, ah! I curled up on my side and tightly wrapped the blankets around me. I really wasn't in the mood to be returning to school, but my dad would probably make me go just for the sake of it. It's time to go to sleep. I reached out to the lamp on my nightstand to turn off. Oh.